Hey guys, it's Joseph here again. And what you guys are about to see is an interview I did with a family therapist. Now, I chose a family therapist because, you know, they really have a good understanding of the family dynamics that come into play when it comes to, um, you know, the, the biggest part of our business, which is, you know, extending the lifetime value of customers, right? So what we discussed was we discussed um, a bunch of things. Uh, one of the things is how how um, to communicate better with uh, with the with your students. Also, we talked about the things that could come into play that could hinder the process of um, really building that long lasting relationship with them. Um, and also some troubleshooting uh, to deal with the kids who um, are a little bit rebellious, you know, how to um, change their mindset and change their frame of mind, the way they view music. And I think this will be really, really beneficial for all of you guys, um, just giving you guys better communication tools that you can use right away. And thank you so much and enjoy the video. Uh, so, in, in a in a real kind of Coles Notes version. Um, so basically, I I currently kind of have two main um, jobs, so to speak. So number one, uh, I, I work full time um, for the York Region District School Board in the capacity of what they call a school social worker. Um, so in essence, what I do is I support students both at the elementary and at the secondary level across multiple schools, um, you know, typically around seven schools, um, that consisting of, of usually one high school and then um, maybe six elementary schools that likely feed their students to that high school. Um, and so basically throughout the school year, September through end of June, um, I am kind of going in between these various schools, supporting students that would have um, struggles around um, mental health concerns like anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, um, addiction, bereavement, whatever you can imagine a young person may go through. Um, I am trying to support students with those concerns during the school day. Um, so in that kind of, you know, 8.30, 9 o'clock to 3.30 time frame, um, I'm in between schools supporting students with, with those kind of concerns. Um, and then, you know, July and August, I'm off from the school. Um, so when the kids are off, I'm off. Um, you know, that's kind of what I do for my, for my full-time job. And then outside of that, uh, I have a psychotherapy private practice um, where similarly, I tend to often work with young people, um, although I have a, a, a broader clientele base. Um, you know, I do work with adults as well. Um, similarly, I, I'm supporting people with concerns like what I mentioned before, the anxiety, depression, struggles around anger, et cetera, relationship difficulties, um, you know, again, broad network. Um, and, and so I, I do that in addition to the board job. Um, obviously, because of the full-time commitment with the school board, I limit how much time I devote to that in my private practice. So, you know, typically about three days out of the week is when I devote my time to that. Um, because outside, outside of all that, I've got a, a wife and two children of my own. So, of course, it's important for me to kind of be able to kind of occupy that role of husband and dad as well. So, so how old are the kids? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, so, I've got a daughter that is um, uh, 14 going in grade 10. Uh, and then a son that is uh, 11 uh, going into grade seven. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, um, so in relation to kind of our chat today, I mean, I don't have um, extensive background myself in the area of music. Um, I, I don't admittedly tend to have a lot of interactions with music teachers. Um, but I will on occasion hear stories about um, kids that are involved in private lessons, um, you know, because in my dealings with young people, um, while they're, they're not necessarily coming to me because of their music lesson, um, in the course of conversation with them about any host of different topics, um, somehow at times the, the conversation will come up about 
um, their involvement in a, a music class, whether private or public, you know, as part of the public school system. Um, and so I've, I've certainly heard varying stories, um, you know, and, and some of them may have to do with retention, um, you know, because I, I think kind of like what you started with talking about earlier on about um, sometimes there being miscommunications, um, whether between um, student and teacher or teacher and parent or parent and child, um, you know, the area that I work with within the in within York region, just as a as a as a side, um, is the Richmond Hill area, and the schools that I support um, historically have had um, they're they're very multicultural. Number one, um, but um, a fairly large um, you know Asian community in some of those schools, um, and one of um, one of the things that I've noticed is. Um, it's not unusual within a lot of these Asian households to have families that um, are, are really motivated to have kids, their children in, in various forms of extracurricular activity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not just, um, you know, academic wise, you know, and, and extra schooling related to academics, you know, like tutors or Kumon or, or all those kind of things. But um, I've certainly witnessed a number of families that have seen their or have held a, a perception that there is benefit to um, enrolling in music lessons, um, whether piano, I mean, uh, that tends to be a large one that I kind of hear about that, you know, there are kids that are taking piano lessons. Uh, um, and a lot of expectations that I, I, I've heard parents have had of their children to um, not only um, engage in this learning, um, but to number one, kind of pursue it to um, a, a, a quite a, a future extent. Um, and often I find that I eventually find myself talking to students where they're at a point, maybe to where you were, you know, at that age 11 range maybe, um, where it's, you know, it, it started out as fun, um, but then it became something that um, you felt more laborious. Um, what and does that word mean La laborers? Uh, yeah, like it was it, oh, it, labor, labor, work. Yeah, work. Labor, yeah, laborous. You know, where it's it's more it's more work than fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 for them, you know, there isn't the enjoyment anymore, and there is a desire to you know give it up. Um, and now it's a battle between young person and parent more so than even with the teacher. Yeah, you know. Where it's the young person trying to get the parent on side with the notion that this is no longer for me, um, and I have other ideas of who I want to be and what I want to do that potentially is in conflict with parents' own vision for what's in the best interest of the child. You know, you know, holding a perception that um, it will be to your benefit if you continue with these piano lessons or or guitar lessons or whatever it may be, and, and, a, and a notion that the child doesn't truly understand and or appreciate what the parent the feels they yeah. understand. Yeah, that you're, you're too young, you don't, you don't realize how this is gonna benefit, you're gonna thank me one day. You know, there's that kind of notion that mm -hmm. you just need to stick through it and trust my good judgment that this is gonna be beneficial to you at some point. So it boils down to a kind of suck it up buttercup kind of approach almost you know that is just you got to do it no matter what and and then there's a rebellion um and 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 i think you know going back to what you were saying about you know your research and what it's found i mean it's not surprising for me to hear music teachers talk about you know there is a a, a, a problem somehow with retention i think the challenge for me is then what does that support need to look like that somehow assist with that retention because in my mind anybody who's who is occupying space in that area um really is kind of a mediator of sorts um because i i, I don't even solely look at it as a, it's a matter of working with a child and getting them on board um or getting them to tap into a passion that was somehow missing i mean i certainly think there's elements to that um, but I, but I do think that somebody occupying space in that area of retention, um, has multiple roles that they have to play. You know, it is, as I just said, getting that young person to, um, 
take a, a new look at music and, you know, trying to, trying to occupy a different lens than what they've been looking at it, you know, through, um, so that maybe there's a whole new appreciation for music. Um, but I think that person providing support is also going to be able to have to be that in between, between the student, the teacher, the parent, so that there's a collective understanding about where, where are we at and, and where are we trying to get to? And, and what's, going to, what's going to help us get there and equally what's going to hinder us from getting there, right? Because I think the other thing that I, I would imagine that is tied to retention is what's the pull that is inviting somebody to draw attention elsewhere? So, so I, I love, I have to stop you right there because yeah. um, what you said, right? based on my research and, and, and all that stuff, I actually put out like a, a video sales letter. Um, essentially it's a, it's a business way of really um, educating, you know, the clients, you know, potential clients and, and, you know, basically inviting them over to do a strategy session with me. Right. And what you just said is, is one of the, you know, big things that I talk about in, in, in my presentation, right. Where, you have to find out, you know, as a teacher, right. If you want to do it by yourself or, you know, if you hire a guy like me, but um, you, you have to find out what, what is hindering that, like what you said, especially hinder, like that sentence alone. Right. I, I remember me saying that in my presentation, yeah. uh, and if you click on it, if you ever decide to watch it, you, you will see that part. Right. And yeah, in, no, that. In, in my in my um, in my thing, in my presentation, I gave examples, but I didn't I didn't give multiple examples, right? Because you have to be fast, right? You can't. Um, the first video I made was 50, 50 minutes long, and I cut it down to twenty. So I had to cut out a lot of stuff, and yeah. essentially I said stuff like, um, you know, if you have to find out what is, is hindering the learning process because um, you have to, um, how do I say it? Like, for example, let's say that the child uh, is, you know, he's a child, but the parents are going through like a divorce, right? It's an extreme example, right? Yeah. You know, the parents are going through a divorce. Well, it's important to know these things because when you do that, when you understand that current situation, you could create a solution. The thing is that everybody isn't going to the exact same current situation. Yeah. Another thing that, um, you know, I heard from, from music teachers while I was doing my research was that a lady said that the biggest issue that she has in her business is, is seasonal slumps. So she says that in education period, every business every educational business goes through this, right? I think a good example of this would be tutoring, right? So tutoring is during the school year, their business is, is up, right? Because there's demand, the kids are in school, right? Yeah. They're act actively using it. But in, in, in the summertime, no one's going to pay for tutoring unless uh, it's, no one's going to pay for like a child tutoring service, right? Because yeah. the child isn't in school. Right. Yeah. So, so what, what you said there where, um, you know, where their attention might be, right? That's what she said, too. Uh, she said that, you know, a lot of kids, right, uh, music is only popular during the school season, right? As a matter of fact, I, I, I was talking to a prospect. I was trying to get her on the call and she said that right now she's not even teaching. And she said that she will start in September when you know, so she's taking a break. She's taking a hiatus. No, she's doing other things, but again, I, I don't know if it's because of, you know, nobody wants to sign up or it's her decision. But when I talked to her, she was involved in multiple things. So it could be a mixture of both. Yeah. Right? But um, kind of like what you said, right? As, as kids get older, they they start to um, find out more about themselves. They start to 
latch on to things more than others, right? Um, a good example with me personally was uh, when, like, I was in school. Um, I was I was a very very good student in terms of like always achieving the highest grades, but especially around like age sixteen, age seventeen, that's when I really started like reading about business and and all that. And basically, the the people I was learning from, they frowned i won't say frowned but they they weren't um they weren't like the biggest fans of like academia and like you know going to school for business specifically right yeah. so that's what happened with me because after a while i'm like well i mean it is true right you are studying uh something uh, uh you know let's say you're studying marketing right um that marketing textbook that you're reading doesn't really apply to the modern age right now right uh like so so my point is that as i got like older and you know i you know started to understand who i am more as a person right and, and the, the path that i wanted to take i you know certain things that i was you know good at right i started pulling away from right so that's a great point that uh, that you you brought that up. Um, the the thing is though, one question I want to ask is that, in terms of um, how do I say it? Like, since you deal with kids who have like issues, right? What are the what are the things that you say to you know either give them confidence, either you know, maybe make them do something that, you know, they, they don't want to, but you know, is good for them. Mm -hmm. Right. Like what are, what are those things? Right. Cause I remember I was talking to somebody else about this and they were family therapists themselves. And, and they said stuff like, you know, as a, like the way to re really train a child isn't um, you have to give them positive feedback um no matter how bad the the feedback is so yeah. so for example um it was both of them husband and wife and the husband said that he he used to be in music um and he actually hated it uh he had two two other brothers i think he might have been the oldest one but he said that basically like he he hated it to the fact that, you know, he, he stepped out of the car, like the, the car was driving, not parked, anything stepped out of the car and, you know, at the stop sign. And he said, he just, he just walked out. Right. It was that yeah. bad. Uh, and he said that it was the same for the other brother, but the other brother was a different story. Right. Um, but that's not the point. The point is that they, um, the point is that what they said was that he, so so he said that when he was in that phase of his life i think he went to a recital and he said that there was a girl who had like a brain injury right she had a brain injury and you can tell because you know uh she you know she had scars on her head and then you know the, it didn't heal right and you, you just knew that you know, something traumatic happened to her. And he said that in terms, like musically, she was a singer, but she was a terrible singer, right? Like objectively, right? Yep. Without any context, right? If, if you, if you, but I think the best way to put it is, you know, if she looked like a, like an average girl, you'd be like, you know, I don't want to say, but like, you know, get this, get this girl off the stage. Right. Like, you know, you know, he's yeah. in American Idol and stuff like that. Um, but they said that he said that, you know, she tried, right. And she tried everything. Right. And he saw, and he noticed her work ethic and, and all that stuff. And he said that she, was in the recital you see people all these kids around her age and you know they're doing you know like beethoven sonatas and and, and classical pieces 
right? Mm -hmm. And it was her turn, right? And he said that, you know, her performance wasn't, you know, was nothing compared to that. But he said that if he was going to give an award to, you know, anybody on that stage, it would be her, right? So mm -hmm. he he was talking about her, him and his his wife and her, both of them were, um, what's it called? They were talking about how as a, you know, when you're like as a teacher, right? Uh, a way to motivate kids is not to tell them that like, oh, you're smart. Oh, you're, you're gifted or, or talented, right? Should always tell them things like, oh man, like what? You learned a new note or or you're able to play this key now, or, oh, yes, you, you, you're, you're able to play this chord, right? You must be, you, you work hard for it, right? Like, oh, you, you know, instead of saying like, oh, I knew you got that, you know, I like, bro, I like, you got, you got good genes, whatever. Instead of saying stuff like that, it was like saying stuff like, um, oh, you know, you work hard. You work really, really hard for this. Um, and really telling the kids, it, 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 it's training the kids really that if I work hard, I could achieve something. Mm -hmm. And it's really doing, creating those kind of little, little feedback loops like that, that really make the kid just want to do something, right? Yeah. Like a good example of that would be like, you know, Michael Jordan when he didn't make the team and then it just drove him more yeah. to make the team. So what are... What are, you know, some instances like that that has happened, you know, dealing with, you know, the kids that you deal with? Um, also, maybe some stories that you think could be applicable to, you know, music teachers in general around mm. subjects like that. Um, well, I have to really think about that last part. Um, I, I think just in response to kind of what you were talking about, number one, I mean, I, I certainly concur with, with what was shared previously with you about, you know, different ways to kind of motivate um, and, you know, kind of drawing, you know, you know, highlighting somebody's accomplishments. I think that's kind of um, what you were describing. You know, I, I, I think I probably do something similar. I mean, although at times I might have a little bit of a different slant on that. Um, you know, like, I, I think, let's say somebody did something that um, was, a, was a notable accomplishment. I mean, I can certainly kind of give praise for that. Like, wow, you know, like, look at what you were able to do. That was incredible. I can, I can do that. But I think sometimes for me, it's, it's helping somebody recognize their own level of perseverance and resilience um, and trying to help them come to appreciate that about themselves. Um, rather than kind of trying to sell it to them, right? So, um, so if somebody is able to accomplish something um, that's notable, you know, I think for me, a line of questioning might be around, you know, like, you know, what do you think it says about you that you were able to to do that? Mm -hmm. You know, what what does that? What do you think that says about you that that you were able to um, pick up that instrument? And with fairly minimal um, instruction, you were able to kind of produce that that music. Like, what, you know, I'm curious. What do you what do you, what do you think that says? And yeah. so somebody then start to kind of reflect, and they might say, "Well, maybe that says that I'm 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 good at at this." And and so then I think it's about okay. Well, let's explore further about that. So you know, but if 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 you have the capacity and the potential to do just that, then what else do you think that capacity and potential could allow for that we haven't maybe yet discovered? You know, might there be other things that are, um, that you might be able to achieve that you have yet to discover that's still tied to that capacity of yours that we're now seeing has allowed for this? Yeah. Right? And so I think it's about almost inviting a level of curiosity for somebody about themselves. Like, oh, you know, this, this, was, this was neat. I didn't even realize I had this in me. Yeah. It allowed me to do this. And what, what else might this be able to do? Mm -hmm. so kind of almost in a, in, a, in a comical way, almost like discovering that you got a bit of a superpower. 
<laughs> like I've got this superpower. Yeah. And just notice that this superpower allowed for this to happen. Yeah. What yeah. Like these powers be able to do that I haven't even yet found, you know, experienced yet. Yeah. 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 Right? Or, or, or converse to that. You know, if there isn't some success story to really draw an example of, right? So let's say, you know, I'm working with somebody where they are very much in a negative mindset um, or they're feeling, you know, like they're defeated in, in whatever aspect. Sometimes I think there's value in even examining the circumstance that they're in that they're feeling defeated by or, or even past circumstance that they had been in that they felt defeated by and just having again a similar curiosity about you know what was it that allowed you to be able to get through that right like you 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 shared with me and you described to me a very difficult time that you've encountered and i'm just curious what it was that allowed you to somehow navigate your way through that given that we're talking about that as a, as a past tense Right. And so what qualities are there within you that serve you well, that allows you to be able to get through difficult situations that you might not even know what them in the moment, how am I going to get through it? Mm -hmm. But something serving to your benefit that allowed you to be able to kind of persevere. And again, I think relating it back to this conversation, you know, I think in terms of what are the tips and tricks and techniques with regard to retention, I think it's about working with somebody to kind of find that same level of curiosity about, yeah, this seems like this is a challenge right now, and this is really a struggle. And I'm curious, you know, have you ever found yourself in other struggles, you know, other difficult times? And if so, what was it that allowed you to be able to kind of push through that? Mm -hmm. You know, enabled you to do that or who enabled you to do that were there were there people in your life that played a role were there certain situations that needed to happen that allowed for you to be able to get through that what was it because maybe there's something in that story that we can tap into now in this current circumstance maybe with your music program that is going to equally serve you well to be able to rise through this situation that we find ourselves in right now right i mean and so i think I'd be just adopting that kind of perspective, curiosity, in, again, in inviting somebody to look differently at a situation that they're, that they're in mm -hmm. and notice things that they might not have been actually noticing already. And I think in that rediscovery of sorts, potentially becomes the spawn to say, hey, I'm seeing this in a whole new light. Yeah, yeah, I really, I really yeah, like that. Of what you're trying to get to, which is how do I help somebody, you know, appreciate a situation that they're in, maybe in a different way, you know, and have a renewed perspective, a renewed energy, a renewed enthusiasm, you know, for something that they were maybe looking at and viewing in a particular way. Mm -hmm. And that viewpoint um, and perspective that they were holding was inviting them to kind of say, this isn't for me anymore, right? I, I don't want to, I want to give this up, you know, or, or maybe I'm not good at it, or, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get any better at it. Um, you know, this isn't for me. I mean, that negative mindset, it plays a, a critical role in, in not just how somebody's going to feel about their themselves and their circumstance, but it inevitably is going to affect how they behave, right? And so helping people, and this is kind of a, a therapy thing in terms of, you know, people call it you know, cognitive behavioral therapy. It's about helping people recognize how one's thoughts and perspectives influence one's feelings and how those feelings influence behavior. And so helping people to recognize that this mindset, that's the most critical point. Mm -hmm. if we can change the mindset, if we can change the perspective, inevitably it's going to change the rest. It's a snowball effect. It's yeah. going to change how you feel. It's going to change how you behave. It's going to ultimately change the outcome of how music is for you. But it starts yeah. with the mindset. And, and it, that, that's, that's 100%, 100% true, uh, um, especially what you, you know, said about the mindset. Funny enough, it's, um, um, 
like me, I have like a, like a mindset routine every day and, and night. Um, I have like a, like a short inversion in the night. Um, and I have a, uh, you know, like the full thing in the, in the morning. And like the first thing it says, it's, it's literally like, like 20 pages long. Oh, wow. it's like, nice. Yeah. It's, it, it's quite intense. Um, but it, it takes me, if I read the whole thing, right. It takes me 30 to 40 minutes, depending on, okay. on how like, you know, with, like engaged I am in it. But it, the first thing is, um, I, what was it? First quote. Um, I mean, I could pull it up, but it basically, it says that like, you know, um, everything starts from your thoughts, um, and your thoughts go to your belief, right. And you're, your beliefs go to um, your actions and then mm -hmm. you get feedback, right? And basically you have to start at the top with your beliefs, right? Take massive actions with your new beliefs. Um, and then I think listen to feedback and iterate. And that's basically how you get what you want in life, right? Mm -hmm. Think about it from like a, let's say from a weight loss perspective, you know, um, we have to think, what are your new beliefs? Okay. McDonald's isn't good for me. Right. What are your actions? Right. Take massive actions. Right. So, you know, I, a, a, a simple one would be like, Oh, you see a McDonald's commercial instead of saying, Oh, I want that. You know, you could say, no, it's, it, it's not that good. Right. Um, right. And then getting feedback what is, Hey, did you, did you eat the McDonald's or, or did you not? Right. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay. Um, you, you go, you post on a Facebook group. That's like all about weight loss. I have this specific situation. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story, right? I'm actually trying to lose a significant amount of weight and right now I've been crushing it. But what it's happened like was I saw a, uh, you know, sometimes stores, they, they try and sell things uh, really, really uh, like they're, they're trying to get rid of it as much as possible. So they mark down the price. And I go to the store frequently. So I know the price and my biggest, like one of the foods that really holds me back from a weight perspective is like just nuts. So like cashews, almonds, um, hazelnuts, any of those kind of nuts I'm like weak for. So what happened was I stopped buying the nuts and I started really seeing myself lose the weight. And these nuts, I think the retail price was like either 10 to 12 bucks. They had it for one, one dollar and 15 cents. And literally, literally, bro, <laughs> I can show you the receipt. I bought 14 of them <laughs> and I'm like, no, this is, uh, what are we doing? Right. I already bought it. It's on clearance. So I'm stuck with it. And what happened was like, I knew right away, right. Especially since I'm on a roll and in a weight loss journey, like the worst thing to do is like lose weight and gain it back. Right. Mm -hmm. So I gave it to my brothers. I said, look, you guys have to keep it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to touch it. And if I want it, I have to do push-ups to get it right. Yeah. So, um, and basically, I, I told myself if I can't handle it, I'm I'm gonna throw it away because it's not it's just not worth it, right? Mm -hmm. But it's 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 really, you know, what you said. It starts from the mindset and then it, it literally just flows. But the, another thing that's important is looking at the iteration and saying, is there something that I need to change? Right. Mm -hmm. for, for me, if I didn't get rid of those almonds, those, you know, those cashews, I'll probably still be at the same weight that that I currently am. Right. So I, I love what you said. Um, you said a lot of stuff. I think we went over by a, a significant. Yeah, I got to wrap it up soon. But yeah. But um, I guess. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. And also, if, if that's the case, then where is, uh, where, how can people get in touch with you for, you know, for your services? Um, psychology Today. Um, so, Psychology Today. Um, is that a have, website? Is yeah. That 
there's a, a, an online therapist directory. Um, you can just Google my name um, and it should come up. Um, um, there'll be a link in psychology today. So it's just a, a little blurb of who I am and kind of what I do. Okay. Uh, and then people can kind of, you know, connect with me via that platform. Um, I can send you the link on, on LinkedIn as well. Um, just so you kind of have it. Um, yeah, so that's probably the, that's probably the best way for people to kind of connect with me. Um, I mean, LinkedIn works too, but yeah, I think I preferred the psychology today. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I guess, I guess that's it. Um, yeah, and, and, and just for, just for the record, I mean, um, number one, it was great to kind of uh, get acquainted with you and, and have this chat. Um, you know, I, I think we kind of share similar mindsets in many respects. Um, and, and, and don't feel like this was kind of like the, the one and only, I mean, if there's a, a time or a, a, you feel like, Hey, it'd be good to kind of reconnect and just touch base about something. Um, feel free to kind of reach out and, um, happy to stay connected, um, and, um, support in any way that I can. Awesome. Awesome. And same, same, right. This is an ongoing, it's an ongoing relationship and who knows, maybe, you know, I might need a, like you uh, uh to you know maybe help some of my clients but but i gotta yeah. say one of the criteria is you know you need to know a little bit some terminology music wise <laughs> okay. you know what a, you know what a chord is you know you yeah, yeah. Know, but it's okay if, if if it reaches that point you know i'm willing to you know show you the basics you know that sounds like a plan <laughs> sounds like a plan <laughs> All right, brother. It was, it, was good. it was good meeting you. Good talking to you. Awesome. Awesome. You too. Wish you all the best with this. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. You guys take care. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>